Describe a time when you're teaching a subject changed after you taught it. For me, the first, well, not the first time, but when we were teaching uh, in Topeka, we were doing a Tai Chi in the rec center there for a while. And we also did some self-defense there. Um, there was a, when I was <clears throat> doing picking fruit, I would always uh, kind of bring my shoulder in when I came down. So um, while I was um, teaching it, one of the other instructors, and this happened to me almost every time, like any time anyone would uh, give some guidance to a student, and I was doing the same, you know, example of the posture, whatever they said applied to me, you know, no matter what, from beginning to end, it's like, oh, I can have my posture better, I can, but anyway, we were teaching uh, picking fruit, and uh, I, I, I just saw how the shoulder rolled back, you know, when, when you came down and kind of reset the, the chest. And uh, for me, that was one of my Eureka moments as far as how to keep that posture um, and my posture while doing picking fruit. Mine was um, with hands like clouds. And it was one of those things where I'd heard it from the same people for several years. And then I attended a different session and heard it from Master Kelney. And just the way he explained it, it just clicked for me. And I was like, oh, like, and not that I was doing it wrong, but it just suddenly it made more sense and it like it flowed and I felt it. And I was like in the zone, whereas before it was always more technical, like I am doing the thing and not <laughs> feeling my way through it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a big fault of, of mine because I tend to get too detailed sometimes just taught the analogy for so long just right. like look yeah. you say exactly what you're doing wrong and how to fix it so yeah yeah so that was probably my fault my bad well it was i mean i had multiple people saying the same way for you know and in different periods like because i started maybe 20 years before for a short period and then came back to it yeah. later and so it was that same message from people 20 years apart and it was <laughs> You know, and he, it wasn't, he wasn't instructing me. He was just saying the way he taught. I had just never been in his lesson of that particular week before. I like that. I like that. That'd be good compliment. <laughs> I mean, I was telling uh, Trish last night, it's like when one teaches to learn, I mean, every time I would teach it, I would get a better understanding of it or ask, when I would teach it, they'd be like, well, what about this? I'm like, I've never thought of that. Hmm. So basically everything that I've taught has been revised and revisited based on the response of the person I'm teaching it. And it, it's safe to assume it's been revisited hundreds of times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think that one of the things that he's talking about too is that when you are a student and you're first learning, you have the tendency to um, not always buy into the exercises or the metaphors that the teacher is trying to get you to do and once you're a teacher and on the other side of that you understand that there's a metaphoric language to learning <laughs> tai chi and that if you don't really invest yourself in that metaphoric language i.e you know feel like you're riding on a horse you know <laughs> squeeze a beach ball between your legs which is really weird when you're a student in a new class um, but as a teacher allows you to connect a metaphoric language so that you don't have to focus so much on the technique. They can just jump into feeling horse stance because they've experienced it versus, you know. Squeeze your knees together. Right, exactly. And I think when I was learning how to teach like that, it was really challenging to be that um, energetic and fun in a way that would connect people to it because I'm much more a soft-spoken, stay in the back, study about it, learn about it, not, you know, <laughs> let's get on a horse, but I learned to do that. And that's really, I mean, I think that whole language has changed my perspective on teaching, but also on pretty much everything. Yeah, there, you, you see gaps in what you thought you knew, I think. And when that is reflected in a student, they're able, like you were saying to Adam, to say, I, I don't quite understand what it is that you're trying to get across. <laughs> so those gaps then are, are 
kind of the transitions in the form, you have to find a way to bridge them within that existing metaphor language, because it may or may not be working for people. And what, what the intensity of that metaphor is for you may not be working. So there are things that we relate to to, to try to uh, uh, bridge that gap that we're humbling. Yeah, like, have you ever been pulled by a car? I mean, you knew that was coming, right? <laughs> Sometimes our metaphors don't bridge the gap, you know, as much as we want that experience to be transferred. It that doesn't. one I get, though. I guess, <laughs> but not everyone does, right? Or, or I was going to say, or even just, you use the analogy of horse dance, um, you know, and squeezing in on, on the horse. If you've never been horseback riding, right. if you've ever been a pool or been in the ocean, that feeling of the water sweeping you away, having to really ground, mm -hmm. or maybe you know when your legs don't work and you're having to relearn how to walk, just that grounding piece of learning to squeeze in, you know, offering some of that to, to the students as well. I think also my knowledge of each thing that I was teaching at some point was just I'm repeating what somebody else told me, and it wasn't until later I'm like. Wait, what does this mean? Yeah. So it's like folding the jeans. Well, what does that mean? How do you <laughs> how do you do that? So I mean, it's one of those things where when you're teaching it, and they say, "I don't get it," or "I don't understand," you're like, "I guess I've never thought of it that way." <laughs> I don't. Let me think about that. So I mean, that's the thing about teaching it so many times is eventually the people are asking the questions that you've never thought of to get a better understanding of it. Bob was the best on that with the horse or with um, the walk. You know, he yeah. would always say, "Have you guys ever worn cowboy boots?" <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have, you ever, have you tried this? Yeah. Yeah. Have you really ridden ride, the horse all day? Yeah. This is not how you're going to walk. Yeah. <laughs> what a delightfully yeah. analytic way to go. Yeah. This so, is what happens to your legs. So sweet.